six steps, seven steps? How many steps are there? The troubleshooting methodology is almost always described as a six step process. However, comptia.com.org actually describes it as a seven step process. So what the heck are the steps and why is there always one missing? Well, let's review. So the first step in the six or the seven step process is to identify the actual problem. What the heck is wrong? Gather information, try and duplicate the problem, ask the questions to try and figure out what are we even fixing? Once you do that, you can actually establish some type of theory. Okay, so we know what the problem is, and now how do we break it? How did this happen? What's going on in general? So once you develop a theory as to how this all came about, you have to test the theory. So those are steps one, two, and three. Very common in both the six and seven step process. You shouldn't find any difference there. Figure out what the heck is wrong, test what the heck is wrong, and then we can actually establish a plan of action. That is step four. And that's the step that's actually usually missing in the six step process that you find in the seven step process. You need to plan how you're going to troubleshoot this thing. How are you going to attack it? How are you going to resolve the problem? So now that we've identified the problem, we've defined the theory around how we got to that issue, we've tested the problem. Now we can actually create a plan of action on how to fix the problem. Okay, so once you have a plan of action, that's fine. What do you do with this plan of action? You need to implement the resolution. You need to fix the problem itself. So once you figure out what the problem is and you've gotten a theory about it, you've tested the theory, then you've created a plan of action to attack it and resolve it, you need to actually put the plan of action into action. So implementing the fix, right? And then once you implement the fix, you want to verify system functionality. Does everything work the way that it should? Have you actually fixed the issue? And here's the last step, my least favorite, but probably one of the most important. You've got to document all this stuff, what the problem was, how it became a problem, how you fixed it, and how you verified that it was fixed. That way, the next time that it is a problem, you or anyone else in your organization can go take a look and make sure that they have the steps duplicated and it doesn't take everybody a huge research project to fix the same thing. So with that being said, let's check out that we have all seven steps. All right, so let's review all this good stuff. First and foremost, you identify the problem. What's next? Develop a theory. And once you have a theory, you can go to number three, which is to test that theory. Once you have all that good stuff tested out, you move on to step number four which is creating a plan of action. Now that you have a plan, you can move into step number five, and that's actually to implement the plan. So you're going to implement the solution itself. Once the solution is implemented, you can move on to step number six, which is to verify your system functionality. Did your resolution actually work? And if it did, then you can shoot straight into number seven and document your findings. Now, if your solution did not resolve the initial problem, you do need to take a couple steps back. You need to go back and do what? Usually all the way to step number two, which is where you're going to start developing a new theory, then you can test the theory, and then you can create a new plan of action. Now, if your theory is the same, the problem is the same, then you can actually just jump back to number four, which is creating a new plan of action, implement the new plan, and then again, test your system functionality. Once you get to a place where your issue is resolved, then document your findings and you're done. So for all of you six steppers out there, eh, I'm not mad at you. In my mind, there can be six, there can be seven, there can be 20 steps to troubleshooting. But if you are studying for an exam, you need to know that CompTIA expects for you to have seven steps in your mind. And you need to go all the way from identifying the issue, creating a theory, testing that theory, developing a plan of action, implementing the plan of action, testing your system, 
and documenting your findings. Hopefully that clears up the whole six versus seven. And at the end of the day, two things actually matter. First, did you certify? Cool, done deal. Next, can you put that knowledge to work? When you're in a real life situation and you're working on a system issue, if you go from step one to three to five to seven, as long as you get all those steps done, you're good. Making sure that you have the ability to identify problems, work through a resolution that is effective, and do it with confidence. That's the secret. So get certified, get paid, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.